Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. We are in Jeremiah chapter 11, and keep in mind, this section of Jeremiah is the pre-Babylon uh, invasion, about 20 years, where Jeremiah is prophesying the doom to come. Um, and pretty much every day for this 20 years, he's warning the people to change <clears throat> and they're just ignoring him. They're not changing. What is amazing about this time here is you see that no matter what, and, and especially with Israel, now keep this in mind that unlike America, now we, we've had people in every generation predicting America's doom that God is going to judge America. Now, usually it's coming from people that are hypocritical, that the evangelical uh, preachers that are decrying, you know, um, um, America's judgment, they, they're they looking at a particular set. Like, for example, if you look look at the evangelical leaders today and you say, well, well why are they saying that America's going to fall? Well, they're, they're saying America's going to fall because to them, America's not following the evangelical uh, 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 format of life, okay? Even though it's hip it's a hypocrite, it's hypocritical. You go all the way back in the 50s, one of the leading, most famous evangelists said that if God didn't judge America, he would have to apologize for Sodom and Gomorrah. Now keep this in mind, he said this in the, in, in the 50s. And he wasn't saying it because of America's sin of racism, the segregation, which was in its height during the 50s. No, no, no. It's that rock and roll stuff that he was that they were bothered by. And even today, you find that uh, that, you know, the people who are decrying the, the sin of America, how bad America has gotten, again, has nothing to do with racism. It's about abortion. It's about gay, but it's not about their sin, it's not about how. For example, they would treat children, immigrants that we read before, okay? But so it's not, so my point is they, the, the evangelical Christians today make it easy for a mockery. They, they are a mockery to Christianity. They are, they are, people can laugh at them because just, when we think about one, I'm not going to get into all the details, like get off of that, but today become a mockery. The, 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 the candidates that they support has nothing to do with Christianity, but because of a political platform that they think would, is a winning platform. Okay. We'll see that, and, and there's no basis of spiritual reality with that. But Israel... They had an example. They had the northern kingdom. I'm sorry, well, Judah did. The, 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 Judah had the northern kingdom as an example of the judgment to come. And yet they're still ignoring, um, they're still ignoring the um, um, uh, warnings of God. Now, remember, Jeremiah was established to be a true prophet. They recognized and acknowledged that Jeremiah was a true prophet. Not like some of these fake prophets you see today, but they acknowledged that Jeremiah was a true prophet, and yet they still ignored his warnings. All right, so let's um, get into it. Jeremiah uh, chapter 11, and then verse 1 says, This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Listen to the words of this covenant and tell them to the men of Judah and to the residents of Jerusalem. Now, he's not speaking to Israel because at this time, the, the northern kingdom of Israel with its capital city of Samaria, is, is the, the land, is, 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 it, it lies in desolation. Verse 3 says, you must tell them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, that a curse be on the man who does not obey the words of this covenant. Now, by the way, no, I won't. I, I'm I'm so tempted to try to use, to compare the 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 religious slash political landscape of today. 
okay? <laughs> and I'll just leave it there because I am so tempted. I am so tempted. But anyway, uh, verse 4 says, Which I command your ancestors when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the iron furnace. I declared, Obey me and do everything I command you, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. In order to establish the oath I swore to your ancestors, he's talking about Abraham, <clears throat> To give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is, as it is today, Israel was the only nation. Israel is the only nation that can say that they experienced the true God, His presence, His miracles. And they are the only nations, which is utterly amazing that it's they turn their back on God. He says, I answered, amen, Lord. Now, you're going to see this back and forth between Jeremiah and the Lord. Verse 6, the Lord said to me, proclaim all these words in the city of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Obey the words of this covenant and carry them out. For I strongly warned your ancestors when I brought them out of the land of Egypt until this day. <coughs> me, warning them time and time again, obey my voice. Yet they would not obey or pay attention. Each one followed the stubbornness of his evil heart. Now, right there, God reveals something. It is the evil heart. Why won't they change? Because of their evil heart. He says, so I brought on them all the curses of the covenant because they had, they had not done what I commanded them to do. Now, if you want to read Deuteronomy 28, you'll see a long list of blessings and curses. Curses. Uh, the, I think that that ver that chapter is something like 60 something, 60, maybe 68 verses, and the majority of that is curses. I think the first 14 verses is the blessing, but the rest of that is the curses. So, verse nine, the Lord said to me, a conspiracy, a conspiracy has been discovered among the men of Judah and the residents of Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their ancestors who refused to obey my words. And have followed other gods to worship them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah broke my covenant I made with their ancestors. Now he mentions <coughs> the house of Israel, which is the northern, excuse me, the northern kingdom. And also keep this in mind, they're coming right off of the administration, the king of Josiah, who was a good king. And they have so quickly returned back to their sin, verse 11. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I'm about to bring on them disaster that they cannot escape. They will cry out to me, but I will not hear them. And this is going to be true. In times past, God heard their prayer. God would, God, they would fall into sin. It could be five years, 10 years, 20 years. They would cry out to the Lord. And he would deliver them. He says, I'm not going to deliver them this time. Verse 12, in the cities of Judah, and the residents of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods they have been burning incense to, but they certainly will not save them in their time of disasters. Now, time and time again, what's going to be interesting, we see that the pagan worships cannot produce the, the, uh, the, the reality of the gods. Actually, even remember in Nebuchadnezzar's case, and from this point, it's going to be you know, maybe 30 years from this point, 30, 40 years from this point, when we see the image, right? God gives Nebuchadnezzar an image of the a prophetic image of the world kingdoms, but his magicians could not interpret it. The problem is that they never can produce, uh, uh, they, they cannot produce the evidence. And here we see God is producing the evidence, okay? But he's also telling them too, these are the gods that you go out and you worship. These are the gods that you go out and cry out to. He says, go cry out to them when the disaster comes. They won't be able to answer you. Verse 13, your gods are indeed as numerous as the city Judah and the altars that you have set, have set up to your shame. Altars to burn incense to Baal as numerous as the streets in Jerusalem. As for you, now he's speaking to Jeremiah, do not pray for these people. Do not rise up. Do not raise up a cry or a prayer 
on their behalf. For I will not be listening when they call out to me at the time of their disaster. What right does my beloved have to be in my house, having carried out so many evil schemes? Hmm. This is so sad here. Uh, can holy meat prevent your disaster? So you can rejoice the Lord's name, the Lord name you a flourishing olive tree. Now, this is something probably defile when you're reading, okay? What does God mean by an olive tree? One of the names, of course, is Israel or Judah or Jerusalem. He says, the Lord named you a flourishing olive tree, beautiful with well-formed fruit. He has set fire to it and its branches are consumed with the great warring sound. Now, remember, this is about 20 years before. <clears throat> so they're not listening to him. They're sort of ignoring him. Or well, I should say, by the way, this is within 20 years. Verse 17, the Lord of hosts who planted you has decreed disaster against you because of the harm the house of Israel and the house of Judah brought on themselves, provoking me to anger by burning incense, incense to Baal. Now, like I say, this is probably one of the most baffling. Um, sin is baffling. You will remember um, the, the case of Adam, and he's probably one, he is the most baffling to me. That uh, when he sinned, now Israel kind of, you can say, kind of leads up on a second lead right here, right? Then I could say maybe David, but David did not turn away from the Lord. In this case here, the sin that I'm referring to is uh, like here. Uh, Israel is, they, they repeatedly turn away, turn from God. Despite all of the evidence, the presence, the, 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 the grace that God has shown them, the mercy that God has shown them, the goodness that God has shown them, and they repeatedly return to empty pagan worship. The Baals here, it's, as one of the examples, that never ever produced anything for them. You remember when G, uh, uh, God brought them out of Egypt in just three months, right? Just just three months outside of being delivered from Egypt. So it's not like it was, you know, 40 years, but like um, um, just the miracles they saw, the Red Sea, three months, and all of a sudden they turned their back on God and said, they said, let's make a golden calf. And and, and, one of the, and again, the, this is baffling to me because the, the, the deception here is unbelievable. So at, they make a golden calf and then with the ultimate of insult and blasphemy, they said, this calf delivered us out of Egypt. The calf delivered us out of Egypt. And now the calf that delivered us out of Egypt, we're going to have this calf who is our God lead us back to the slavery. Again, same thing with Adam. I, I cannot understand why Adam turned his back on God. Yeah, literally, right? Literally, he had the world. And, and, and uh, he had... Everything that you can fantasize about. Now, so he had the entire world plus a garden that God made for him. The most beautiful woman in the world, albeit she was the only woman, but what does it matter to him if she was the only one? But I would imagine that uh, Eve was a looker, even if after 
all of the children came along, you'd probably get up and go, yeah, Eve, yeah, yeah, she, she's a looker. But it didn't matter. But, 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 but the point is that he had everything and decided, I'm going to sin. Baffling to me. Baffling to me. Uh, verse 18 says, the Lord informed me, so I knew. Then you helped me to see their deeds. Well, I was, I was like a docile lamb led to the slaughter. I didn't know that they devised <coughs> plots against me. Let's destroy the tree with this fruit. Let's cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. Hmm. Now, we're going to see <coughs> a lot of temptations. I mean, the, the trials that Jeremiah will go through. He's not, um, yeah, he's going to go through some stuff. Um, people are not going to like praise him and say, at a boy, Jeremiah, he is going to suffer for delivering these prophecies that God is, is given, is, is commanding him to prophesy. Verse 20, but the Lord of hosts who judges righteously, who tests the hearts and the mind, let's see your vengeance on them. But I have presented my case to you. Um, <laughs> um, uh, verse 21. Therefore, here's what the Lord says concerning the people of Anana. Anatha. Anatha. Okay. Um, who want to take your life. They warn you must... You you must okay. I'm let me go back. I'm sorry. Oh, let me read verse 21 again. Therefore, here's what the Lord says concerning the people of Anath, Ananath, Anna, Anathoth, Anathoth, who want to who want to take your life. They warn you must not prophesy in the name of Yahweh. Well, you will certainly die at our hands. Therefore, this is what the Lord of hosts says. I'm about to I'm about to punish them. The young men will die by the sword. Their sons and daughters will die by famine, and they they will have no remnant. For I will bring disaster on the people of Anath, Anathoth. In the year of their punishment. Now, Anathoth, remember, was his hometown. Jeremiah comes from this city. This is their hometown. And um, as Jesus said, that a prophet has no honor <laughs> among his own folks, his own kinfolk, his own town. Okay? They're threatening him. They're saying, you, you stop prophesying in the name of the Lord. Now, uh, no doubt they should probably, they wanted some of the kind of prophets we have today that only prophesy good. And yes, I'm making a crack against a lot of these so-called prophets today that only prophesy good stuff. You know, yay, 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 the Lord says, look to me and be free. Yay, 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 send me some money and, 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 and okay, I'm, yeah, yes. Um, there is a prophetic ministry mess out there today. But these people are saying, don't prophesy in the name of Yahweh and notice their threat or you will certainly die. Now, Jeremiah had already been prepared by God. You will go through this. You will go through the, the, the you will go through this kind of temptation and hardships. Okay. All right, guys. Um, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to VP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome, and I'll see you in the next study. All right.